All right, hey everybody. This is video two about universes and predicate validity. And uh, again, we're on lecture notes number 15. Uh, and we're gonna go mainly through section two of those lecture notes if you'd like to follow along. I think in this case, it might be really useful if you have those up. All right, so we talked about how universes make well-formed formulas uh, of predicate true or false. And I just wanna remind you uh, a little bit about um, some of our terminology. So. We, uh, we talked earlier about um, some global properties that formulas have. We talked about tautologies, for instance. Tautologies are formulas that are true in every situation. Contradictions, formulas that are false in all situations. We also had some other terms like consistency and contingency. Remember, consistent formulas are true in at least one situation. Contingent formulas are true in at least one and false in at least one situation. Now, we had a pretty reliable way in sentential logic to figure out which formulas were tautologies, contradictions, consistent, and contingent. Uh, and that was the method of truth tables because there's always a, for any formula, there's always a finite number of truth value assignments you can have and so you can just check the truth table to see if it's always true, always false, true in at least one situation, false in at least one situation, etc. When it comes to predicate, things are quite a bit different. And that's because the number of universes, because a universe is just a domain and interpretation, the number of universes are actually infinite. There could be uh, infinitely many different domains, and there could be infinitely many different interpretations. And so we can't do like a nice truth table sort of with the universes, there's just too many. Given this, it's pretty tricky to figure out uh, whether or not a, a, a well-formed formula predicate is a tautology or a contradiction. It's not impossible, it's actually not that hard, but it's not something we're going to do in this class. We're going to focus instead on showing that well-formed formulas of predicate are consistent or contingent. And this is easier because to show that a formula is consistent, you merely need to find a situation where it's true. That is, a universe where it's true. And to show that it's contingent, you have to show that there's at least one situation where it's true and one where it's false. And so the fact that there's infinitely many of these doesn't sort of present, pre present a barrier in the way it does to showing that a formula is a tautology or a contradiction. All right, so let's just see how we go about doing this. Suppose we want to show that a formula of predicate is consistent. That means we need to show that there's some situation where it's true, some universe. So let's take the first example from the slideshow. Suppose we want to show that this formula is consistent. That says something is p and something is not p. To show that this is consistent, what do we have to do? We have to come up with a domain and an interpretation that makes that formula true. That is, we have to come up with a universe. So, there's lots of correct answers here, tons of different things you could say, but here's the one that I did on the slideshow and that I'll talk about. Let's let our domain include the uh, all and only the positive integers, that is the counting numbers. That's our domain. And let's let our interpretation, remember we've only got to interpret the, the thing that's in our formula, in this case it's P. Let's let the interpretation of PX be X is even. I believe that's what's on the, the slideshow. So why does this make this formula true? Well, think about it this way. The first part here says something is even. Something in our domain is even, and in fact there are even numbers in our domain. Two is one of them. So we know that's true. This part says something is not even, and there are non-even numbers in our domain, such as one and three. So that part's true. And we know that an AND statement, a conjunction, is true whenever both parts are true, so we know that the whole statement is true. And so we've come up with a universe that makes this formula true, and since a consistent formula is a formula that's true in at least one universe, we've demonstrated that this formula is consistent. Let's try another example. Let's show that uh, the following formula is consistent. Let's show that this formula is consistent. Not everything is P. Again, we need a domain and an interpretation, that is a universe, that makes the formula true. So again, lots of correct answers here, but here's one. Let's let our domain 
These are students at the top. And let's let our interpretation of the px property be x is on the basketball team. So, how does this work? Well, this says, if we took off the negation here, if we didn't look at the negation, um, we would have the claim that every student at DePauw is on the basketball team. But that's false. Every student at DePauw is not on the basketball team. That is, that part of the statement, just everything is P, is false. But a negation is true whenever the thing it negates is false, so we know that the whole thing must be true. In other words, not everyone is on the basketball team, not every student at DePauw is on the basketball team, and so we've got a, a universe that makes this formula true, and since all you need is one to show consistency, we've now shown that this is a consistent formula. It could be true in some situation. Okay, how do we show that a formula is contingent? Well, to show that a formula is contingent, we have to show that it could be true, but it could be false. That there's, there's some situations where it's true and some situation where it's false. So let's go back to the example we had before. Something is P and something is not P. We've already seen that there's a situation where this is true, so I'm not going to walk through that again. You can go back and rewind the video and see it again if you'd like to. But let's see how we go about showing that this is false. That is coming up with a universe where it's false. If we do that, then putting that together for what we've already done, we'd have a universe where it's true, a universe where it's false, and so we'd be able to see that it's contingent. That is, it could be true, it could be false. Again, lots of Lots of correct answers here that could make this formula false. Uh, but for this case, I'm going to say, let's let our uh, domain again be the counting numbers. So the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. But this time, let's change the interpretation of px. This time, let's let px mean x is positive. So why does this make the formula false? Well, let's think through it. The first part says there's something in our domain that is positive, that is greater than zero. And that's true, actually, because all the numbers are positive. The second part of our formula said there's something that's not positive in our domain. But that's false. Our domain just includes the positive counting numbers. So there's nothing in our domain that's not positive. That is, something is not positive is false. But an AND statement, a conjunction, is false whenever even one side is false. So we know the whole thing is false. And thus, this universe here makes that formula false. And so together with what we've already shown that it could be true, we're able to see that this formula could be true and it could be false. That is, it's contingent. There's a universe where it's true and a universe where it's false. Let me go through one more example here. And, uh, and then we'll be done with this part of the video. So I want to show that one more formula is contingent. Let's show that this formula, all p's are q's, is contingent. So to show that it's contingent, we need to come up with a universe where it's true and a universe where it's false. So let's start with the true universe here. Uh, again, lots of correct answers, but here's the one I'm giving. Let's let the domain consist of blue triangles and red squares. So that's it. There's blue triangles and there's red squares and there's nothing else in our domain. Now, how about our interpretation? In this case, we have to give an interpretation for two different letters, P and Q, because we've got those both appearing in our formula here. So let's let PX mean X is blue, and QX mean X is a triangle. Does this make our formula true? You can probably intuitively see yes. It says all blue things are triangles. And if our domain contains only blue triangles and red squares, then yeah, it's true that all blue things are triangles. 
So intuitively, you can see it works. <coughs> Let me walk through uh, a little more carefully why this is the case. This says for every element in our, in our domain, this conditional is true of it. If it's blue, then it's a triangle. Well, what happens when we pick a blue triangle for x? Well, then it's true here that the thing is blue. It's also true that the thing's a triangle. And so the whole arrow is true in that case, the if then statement is true. So when we pick a blue triangle, we know that if p then q is true of the blue triangle. What happens when we pick a red square? I've only got orange chalk, so you're just going to have to pretend this is red. What if we pick a red square? So we pick a red square here. Well, then it's false that the thing is a, is a triangle, so that's false there. But it's also false that it's blue, and false arrow false is true. So no matter what we pick for x, if p then q comes out true of x, and that is to say that for every element of our domain, this conditional is true, which is to say that the whole formula is true. So we found a universe here where this formula is true. What about a universe where it's false? That will complete our task to show that it's contingent, that is that it could be true and it could be false. Again, lots of correct answers here. Lots of correct answers here. Uh, but here's, here's one. Let's let our domain consist of all living people. And our interpretation uh, of px is going to be, uh, sorry, x is female. And our interpretation of qx is going to be x is a mother. So this says, all of all the living people, if they're female, they're mothers. And again, intuitively, you can probably see this is false. But just a little more carefully, how do we show it's false? We need to find some element in our domain, some living person who has this property, who it's true that they're female, but false that they're a mother. And you can probably come up with lots of examples here. Uh, on the slides, I think I said, think about Taylor Swift. Uh, she's a living person, so she's in our domain. She's female, but she's not a mother. And so uh, it turns out that this formula is false according to this universe on this domain and interpretation. So the formula is contingent because we've shown that it is true in some universes and false in some universes. All right, that pretty much does it for this section. Uh, you'll see there's some practice problems. You can come up with uh, universes uh, for three different formulas uh, to practice doing this, uh, universes that make the formula true and universes that make it false. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about how to use universes to establish validity and invalidity for certain predicate arguments, in particular predicate arguments we couldn't show validity with using Venn diagrams as we did before.